The Trigger Spoon Jr. Small spoon, big results. Get on over to fishhuntshoot.com and get yours today and you'll be yelling fish on tomorrow. Just like that, baby. Okay, this was 52 feet deep. Um, we, were, we started out deep, wasn't working. There's a lot of fish out deep, but we weren't able to hook them. So we moved inshore, we started working these points here. Um, we were in about 75 feet of water, about 52 feet deep. This is on one of the... There we go, woo! Nice fish! <laughs> Was a that was a strike and a half. Wow, that was crazy. I know you guys want to go out there and catch a whole bunch of landlocked king salmon, but you've been struggling because they aren't very easy to catch. Um, you might be fishing at Lake Almanor where they've caught some real big, beautiful fish this year. You might be fishing at Lake Oroville where you know the good anglers. The knowledgeable guys, they're catching limits. Or maybe you're just fishing at Folsom Lake. That produces some monsters too. My top fish out of Folsom was 28 inches long. But the bottom line is, you'd like to be catching them consistently, but you're not. Well, today is your lucky day, because I'm gonna share with you my number one rig for leveling the playing field when it comes to hooking landlocked kings. And I've never seen anybody else use this rig, so notepad out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach you something today, something useful. So what do I have? Well, first of all, I have a section uh, about 14, 15 inches long of 20 pound fluorocarbon leader material. Yeah, it's heavy line. I've got it tipped with two fairly large number four octopus hooks and I've got them uh, snelled real close together. So that's the business end. 20 pound fluorocarbon, two number four octopus hooks. In my pocket, dig around in here, I've got a six inch dodger. In this case, a sling blade, could be a silver horde blade, could be uh, any manufacturer's blade. It could be a Lord Jensen blade, doesn't matter. You need a six inch dodger. You want a lot of kick, a lot of flash, a lot of motion, you want a six inch blade. Put that back in my pocket. Now, what am I gonna put on those hooks? Am I gonna put on a hoochie, golf, who knows? No, if you guys guys been watching me long, you know I'm going with real bait. In this case, uh, tray bait anchovy. And what I've done is I've removed about half of his body, in, in you know, in terms of the fillet, about half the length of his body. So I have a nice fillet, shiny on that side, juicy meat on that side. Pretty simple from here on out. Here's what you want to do: the fat end. If you did that right, there's a fat end, there's a skinny end. Take the top hook on your leader, the one closest to the dodger, because you're going to run this behind that dodger, and go back maybe, oh, perhaps a quarter inch or less, about a hook gap, I guess. Never really thought about it like that. Go back about a hook gap and just pin that through from the meat side right up through the shiny side. Now take the other hook, kind of figure out where it, where it wants to sit on that fillet naturally, pass it through the fillet as well. So I think that's gonna be real comfortable right about there. Right about there. Do the same thing, pass it all the way through, get it positioned like so. So, there we've got the fillet, we've got both hooks in it, doesn't really matter where the hook points lay. None of that matters. Doesn't matter how straight that is. Doesn't matter if it's bent. Can be on there anyway. Clip that on behind your dodger. Right here. Let's open that snap up. Clip that on the back of your dodger. Just like that. There's your dodger. There's your fillet. That's it. If you're using a sling blade, you have to put a little cup in that blade because what I want you to do, I want you to troll this from one to one and a half miles an hour. I want you to troll it really slow. 
you're going to have your downrigger down. You know, you might be down 60, 70, 80. You might be down 100 feet. Doesn't matter. Get that thing working, and, and you should just see that, that fillet. When you put it aside of the boat, that fillet should just be kind of pulsing behind that blade. If it's getting too much movement on it, lengthen that leader a little bit. I just want a little pulsing, very subtle action. All I, all I want is a juicy fillet back there, putting out a bunch of scent, um, and when they come in, they're gonna taste it, it's real meat. That's what we're looking for, not a ton of action. The Dodger's gonna draw them in, we just want them to see that bait. Now here's what's gonna happen. You're gonna have your gear down, you know, however deep, 60, 70, 80 feet. Your rod's gonna be loaded into downrigger, and you're gonna see some of this action. Now, he might rip it off there. Probably not, though. You're gonna see this. Tap, tap, tap. Tap, tap, tap. He's tasting that filet. Tap, tap, tap. Tap, 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 tap. tap. Oh, 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 you got him. That's what happens. Once they get a taste of that filet, um, it's almost a guaranteed hookup. So that's it. It's super simple. It ain't sexy, it's effective. Heavy leader material, large octopus hooks, and a filet of tray bait anchovy. Super simple, super effective. Give it a try, you're gonna like the results. It just flat out works. Anyway, this is Kel Kellogg. Get out there to Oroville or one of those other lakes I mentioned. Get that rig in the water. You're going to take home some King Salmon. I guarantee it. Anyway, thanks for tuning in, folks. Thanks for supporting the channel. We'll be back at you real soon. This is Kel Kellogg signing off.